So now we're going to go ahead and switch over to our AMA portion with Team 10435, the Circuit Breakers, uh, to start off. Could you tell us a little bit about your history in FTC and in FIRST? Um, so we started um, with our school, uh, Waukee High School, or Waukee Timberline, actually, to start off, which is our middle school. Um, and so... Andrew, he started in seventh grade. Jacob started in seventh grade. Uh, I started in eighth grade. And so uh, for three years, we were with our school. Um, and then this year, we just broke off from our school and we're in the Pathfinders organiz uh, nonprofit organization. And so that is where our team currently stands. How many members on your team? We have 12, uh, 12 total team members, yeah. Yeah. So how do you guys uh, come up with your, your name for your team? <laughs> um, so we um, our original name was Timberline 9 because that was our school and then we were ninth graders and it was just like a placeholder name. And so like one day in eighth grade, we were like, we need a team name. And so we just like wrote stuff on a like whiteboard and then we were just like, circuit breakers, sure. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And it was like, okay, that's our team name now. Yeah. So uh, uh, what do you guys think uh, sets your team apart from uh, some of the other teams that are out there? I would say particularly this year was posting YouTube videos of our matches fairly early on, showing off our robot. We weren't really trying to hide anything. And I believe that just trying to help the community in that way and not trying to hide what has so far been a successful design has been a, been a high point. All right, could, we, could you explain your design process briefly? I know that many teams struggle with sticking to one plan the whole season. Uh, how do you guys design your robots? Yeah, so at the start of the year, similar to how we found our team name, actually, we do basically big team whiteboard meetings where just brainstorm, get everything out there. Uh, and then we really think uh, about what, what the meta is going to be like, what's going to be the best design, what's going to work most efficiently, and what's going to be the design that everyone has at Worlds. Because typically at Worlds, you'll see a lot of similar robots that work in similar ways with similar subcomponents. Um, so that's kind of how we come up with our design. And we actually just redesigned not too long ago. You can see this is not the current robot in this video. But um, so sticking with one design is like we haven't done that, but we stick with one idea instead of one actual design. And that's been the big part of this year's robot so far. What do you guys think the biggest challenge uh, is that you face this year, mechanically or programming wise? Uh, <laughs> I'll say the biggest challenge we've had is... Um, stones in general um the stone like game element this year is very um I, w I would just say not as consistent like you can have certain stacks of stones that will go nine high and then fall over and these stones are within tolerance but it's like um uh, like they just can't stack because like either like the nubs on the top are too high or like the like bottom caved in part is too low um, it would just prevent stacks from happening. And so a lot of our design of our robot has come down to managing the differences between these stones. And a lot of our strategy comes down to like trying to figure out which stones are good and how we can ensure the stones that we pick up are the best stones and not stones that will create like a bad tower. Yeah, so you guys uh, obviously put a lot of effort into your robot. So how much time do you guys spend per week working on your robot or working for something else for competition? In general, um, we'll usually run uh, three to four meetings a week, generally about three hours long, but sometimes in the weeks before competitions. So last week before our league championship would be an example. We met, I think, six out of seven days, usually for at least three hours, just to get prepared for everything. So you talked a little bit about your design process earlier. Uh, it looks like you guys do a lot of planning. Uh, what do you, do you use CAD? What CAD software do you use? 
what's like your main manufacturing technique? Because if you're using CAD, you might be doing something custom or using CNC, 3D printing, laser cutting, stuff like that. Um, so for CAD, our team usually does not, I would say CAD beforehand. Um, it's just, it's easier for us to build beforehand because prototyping is easy when you have the parts in front of you. Um, but for CAD, we do use Inventor Pro basically because that's what they teach at our school here in Iowa. Um, so that's why we use that. And uh, we do have a lot of 3D printing on a robot. And that usually comes down to designing on CAD. So those are parts that we do design before. Um, and we, a lot of our current design is using 3D printed parts. So, yeah. Yeah, I'd like to add on to that. Um, previously, like our old robot that's in like all the YouTube videos did not have a lot of 3D printed parts. And once we did like the redesign, we knew like kind of what we wanted um, from using Actobotics and Rev. So then we're like, okay, we know how we want to construct this now. So now it's really easy just to turn it into like a 3D printed part because uh, we know what we want essentially. So making the, like the cadding was a lot easier after making one robot and then transferring to the next one just because like the experience that we got from building the first one essentially awesome and what's your prototyping process like you mentioned actobotics is that mostly what you do for prototyping or do you guys do any other things for prototyping this year in general we started with a lot of rev products using the 15 millimeter extrusion um pretty much everything including the intake the lift the chassis was all built with rev products and even on our new redesign, we're still using that 15 millimeter extrusion, a uh, slightly different type, but that's a great tool with its, you know, great degree of flexibility um, in mounting options. And with how many products they have, it's a great tool to prototype with. Um, and then it gave us a great base to design our next robot off of, which is what we're using now in all of its 3D printed parts. Yeah, and I'd like to add to that just real quick. Um... For custom parts on the spot, we use a lot of Lexan because it's really easy for us to just cut a piece of Lexan and make it work and then 3D print a better mount later. Uh, so for the past couple of years, you guys have been a really high scoring team. And so is there anything you guys think is something that has really played a major role in your robots or something you've done that's <laughs> like a really a reason that you guys perf always perform well? Um, the motto we stick by is simple is better. So when it comes down to designing our robots, we try to make it use the least amount of moving parts as possible because another moving part means another thing can go wrong. So we really try to make our robots simple, efficient, and reliable. And I think that's a big part in us scoring big. Yeah. Uh, something else to add on to that is like meta prediction at like the beginning of the season is like super important like just trying to like brainstorm like taking like a meeting just to brainstorm like what do we think is going to be like the best robot and like how come like for this game how can we get the stones from a to b like as fast as possible and what mechanisms will make it simple and effective essentially so do you think uh, like how the game's being played right now is like pretty much what you guys predicted or did you guys predict something different? What, what was really your prediction at the beginning of the season? Um, we thought that, uh, so our um, stone grabber use it, like can rotate all the way around. And mm -hmm. so initially we were like, there were, there's definitely gonna be people doing like two by two stacks like right away. Um, and so we wanted our, we designed our robot like that so our robot can adapt like when people do two by twos. But currently there haven't been a lot of two by twos. Most of the time it's just one single stack and then that's enough because like stacking um, two by twos, like you're not gaining any higher levels. And so like w w like the max like level right now is like 11 to 12 to cap and people have been able like loon has been able to cap at 12 and then uh, not have the tower fall over and stuff like that mm -hmm. um and so you know no one's had to do two by twos yet essentially yeah and add on to that I, basically the main meta we predicted was going to be a through through robot design with an intake 
and then a separate outtake system that would be fast and efficient. And that's what we've been trying to design since the start of the year. And so, one, one final thought on that would be, uh, we debated heavily early on whether teams would be doing two robots stacking or one robot stacking and one feeding. And it seems like, at least for right now, both can be successful. Um, but it really takes two stacking robots that take about the same amount of time to cycle to do it effectively. So in most cases at our league meets, we have to do one feeding, one stacking. Whereas I think as we get closer to worlds, two robots stacking will be the meta. So what part on your robot do you think is most unique uh, to your team right now? Um, well, I think probably the most unique thing about our robot right now would be our chassis. Um, it's essentially comprised of four 15 millimeter extrusions and then all 3D printed parts. So even with a fairly simple manufacturing process of just cut some simple bars and 3D print some parts, where we are able to create a really customizable, strong, and efficient chassis without use of like a laser cutter or a CNC, like many other teams doing custom drivetrains are doing. So I just wanted to dive in a little bit about your robot now that we've got it. I put some pictures in the folder, Tyler, so if you could pull up a couple of those. There was one that stood out to me um, in particular, uh, the bottom of your robot. You said that you had a lot of really cool things going on with the bottom of your robot, and you just talked about your four pieces of rev and 3D printed parts. Could you explain what's going on here, your odometry system, how everything's come together? Sure. Um, so as you can see, the main structure is those four 15 millimeter extrusions and then an L beam at each end of it. But the main structure holding it is all of those 3D printed parts. You can see our lift motor mount, the dead wheel encoder mounts, the drive wheel mounts are all 3D printed parts. They give the chassis a great deal of rigidity, but it also allows for easy drop in replacements with the way we have them mounted. And those are all modeled in Inventor and they they give us you know the exact tolerances we need whereas before trying to use you know off the shelf parts we weren't able to fit things like we wanted to awesome and so your dead wheel encoder wheels they look like they're connected to gearboxes could you talk a little bit about that um there there's no gearboxes on that's just a straight like chinese encoder Oh, okay. That looks like a planetary gearbox on there, and I'm yeah. like, what? All right, yeah. it's really, really cool. Um, and so you guys did a rebuild, and we've talked a little bit about that. Could you tell us a little bit about why you picked doing a rebuild? Uh, I think we had some questions in Discord about that as well. Yeah, so the basis of our design process for this year was really start of the year for the league, first couple of league meets at least, um, let's throw together the robot and find out what works because that's really what it comes down to. We got to find out what is going to work best. Uh, to do that, that's most of the robot you, uh, you see in our YouTube videos with the rev lift and the, uh, all that. And then uh, when we had our first big break between league meets, we said, all right, let's sit down, let's take this apart and let's figure out how to make each component better. And to do that, um, that's when you see our new chassis our new um, 3D printed mounts, our new lifts, and all these 3D printed mounting systems uh, to make it work better. And that's where we're at right now. Yeah, I like to add on to that. Like another big part of like why we wanted to do the redesign is that we didn't want to use um, rev extrusions for our lift anymore. We wanted to uh, switch to the Sanford slides. Um, and then also we were, previously we, we only had two wheel odometry. Um, and so we wanted to switch to three wheel and making the space for that required like a pretty much a complete chassis redo. So with like those two things we wanted to do. And then also we were like, we can 3D print a whole lot of this and like maybe get design award or something. It's like, okay, <laughs> might as well like just redo it and do a redesign. So why'd you pick the Sanford slides over Misumi's? Just something that I'm curious about. <laughs> I guess I would say I was a big proponent on uh, rebuilding that lift. And in my mind, buying from a company that's based in the United States is run by a student and gives an arguably higher quality product for a lower price is really important, especially given that student from 8802 I know has had issues 
um, funding his team in the past, it felt really good knowing that we were helping out a student and a team that needed it. All right. So Island from the Discord asked, how many seniors are on your team? Uh, uh, we have six. Yeah. All right. And Jose, go ahead, Egan. So uh, Jose from the Discord asks, how much robot code work is done on your robot throughout league meets, or is it mostly driver practice? Um, code work? You mean like tuning code in general? Or I like... think it, yeah, I think it's also asking like how much um automation like is done for like doing driver controlled, and then how much of like your control is just practice from the drivers. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, there, there's a lot of automation in the, um, controls, like, for example, um, like, going up lift levels, like, the driver just hits, um, like, the robot remembers the previous level, like, stone level that, um, it was at, and then the driver can just hit A to, like, go one level higher, or X to go to the same level, um, it's all, like, really simple for the driver, there's lots of little things, like, the horizontal extension, um, like automatically goes out in line with the um, nubs on the foundation so that if uh, the main driver is up against the foundation, then like the stone will be lined up with the nubs. There doesn't have to be any like jankness. A lot of tuning has gone in to ensure like accurate encoder counts per time and stuff like that. It, yeah, there's a lot of programming happening. Um, that helps out the drivers a lot. All right. Now we're going to take some questions from the chat that we've gotten. Uh, Fulton3415 asks, will you pick team five? Oh, sorry. My bad. <laughs> um, who, will you pick team 5143 as a second pick at States like you did last year? Perhaps. Who knows? <laughs> what I'll say about uh, Alliance picks is at our league championship, we had nothing decided until right before Alliance selection because there's so much variation during matches. It was impossible to decide before then. Oh, yeah. Rayo Rama asked, uh, what material do you guys 3D print with and what printer do you use? Uh, so we 3D print with uh, PLA uh, and then the 3D printer. It's actually, yeah, it's that one. <laughs> uh, it's the Creator uh, Creator Pro by Flashforge. Um, it's been a really good printer. I uh, haven't had a lot of problems with it. I've had it for about two years now. And yeah, it's a good printer. Awesome. Uh, Adam14875 asks, how is their autonomous and what is their strategy for it? Uh, autonomous is great. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. um, autonomous is... Um, two stones, sky stones, and then put them on the foundation, move the foundation to the uh, build zone, and then park. Um, yeah, so that we've had two stone, like, working for since, like, our second meet, but then, like, now it's a lot more consistent. We're using, like, um, three-wheel odometry and stuff like that to ensure, like, accurate heading and stuff like that. So, yeah, it's looking so solid right now. Seeing YouTube videos, you wouldn't see much of a difference in overall performance, but behind the scenes, there's been a lot of work on overall consistency being done to make sure that that works every single round that we play. Yeah. Uh, someone, oh, here we go, wait. Uh, Dev Boosh asked, uh, what encoders do you guys have on your, I assume it's your odometry wheels. Do you guys uh, know what brand and everything? Uh, they are sign-wise off of Amazon. That, yeah. <laughs> they're really inexpensive compared to the other options, but keep in mind they're really bulky. And uh, I think if we were to redo that now, we would probably use the Rev through bore encoders instead. Yeah. Also, with those encoders, you have to make your own wire, so it's a little inconvenient. Yeah. Are you guys ever done building or coding before competitions? Uh, or do you run up to the last minute? Never. We are never uh, done. <laughs> we always run up to the last minute, whether we like it or not, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> Is that any uh, all-nighters from that, or just long days? No. Not yet. Just long days or weeks. <laughs> awesome. And so what does your season schedule look like? I know a lot of people don't do the league meets and haven't ever experienced that. When's your first competition? What's your usual schedule? 
our first league meet was uh, early November. And then past that point, we had them up to every week. At one point, we had one three Saturdays in a row. So those were super busy times trying to fix things in those in-between weeks. Um, but now we will have our super qualifier this Saturday, which should be live stream if you guys want to watch. And then uh, Iowa State competition is the last weekend in February, uh, February 28th and 29th. Awesome. And one question that we had was, which teams do you draw inspiration from? Well, uh, at the beginning of the season, we, you know, with the intake being so important this year, we drew a lot of inspiration from all the teams like Gluten Free that were using them for Relic Recovery. But even smaller teams, if you show up in YouTube search results for a video, we've probably watched it. Um, with YouTube, YouTube videos being a huge inspiration, no matter how big or small the team is. Awesome. So what plans do you guys have for the rest of this competition? I mean, you have probably one of the most successful robots in Skystone so far. What's your plan to make it better? Uh, you talked a little bit about consistency. What else are you guys going to be working on? Three stone. <laughs> um, more stones than auto, definitely. Um, yeah, but like, I've got an odometry working. So getting up to like three and four stones, eventually when I put the time in, will hopefully be possible by state or by worlds. Yeah, what do you guys and, think? Oh, what what do you guys think for uh, we'll see at worlds for auto? Do you think we'll see six stone? Do you think five is kind of where it's gonna cap out? What do you guys think? Uh, I think gluten free will definitely. A, yeah. six stone. Distinct possibility that that gluten free hits six by then, but I think there'll definitely be a decent amount of teams up in that four to five range. And do you think uh, in those big stone autonomouses, do you think teams are going to start actually stacking the stones during autonomous, or do you think they're still going to kind of just put them onto the foundation? Or do you think stacks will start being made during autonomous? Um, well, we already seen that uh, Sanford did do a three-second autonomous, which I think is really cool, but I think it's going to be more important the amount of stones you actually bring over in autonomous. Um, because that's the more points in the long run, and Autonomous will win games, as you've seen it's happened in previous games, like Relic Recovery. Um, so I think it's going to be much more important if you bring over that fourth or fifth stone instead of stacking the three in Autonomous. Yeah, and also stacking seems to be uh, really hard in, like, um, yeah, like, in auto, just having it, like... Per, be per, having your robot perfectly aligned to put a stone on and not, not knocking over your tower and auto seems like a pretty hard task and so uh, it's, it seems like making a consistent stack in auto might not be um, too easy but who knows we might see a team do it thanks for watching if you want more fun content be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos you can also directly help support fun by visiting our patreon at patreon.com forward slash first updates now or by subscribing at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Thanks to all of our co-executive producers on Patreon and tier two plus subscribers on Twitch keeping fun loud, live, and independent.